I'm Bill, I'm with Kalimoto TV. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the garage, where today we have the 2022 BMW S1000 single R up on the lift, and today we are working on the drive system on this. That's right, we have a full replacement chain and sprocket kit from drive systems going on the new single R. Now I have to give a huge shout out and thank you for Drive Systems for making chain and sprocket removals and just fitments so nice. When you order from Drive Systems, they send you the chain and everything all cut to length. You guys don't have to mess with it. It's just super, super nice. So I just have to give a big thank you to Drive Systems for making it so easy. But today we, uh, we're gonna walk you guys through step by step on how to remove the chain off the single R. Uh, we're also gonna do a quick walkthrough on uh, removing the rear wheel and, uh, and then replacing the chain and sprocket. Now, uh, I put a poll out on YouTube today asking, you guys, do I do a 16 tooth sprocket or do I keep the stock 17 tooth sprocket? Now, today we are going to be walking through and taking this off. Now I gotta go get rear tire for this thing tomorrow. So we're gonna see what the poll says and install that tomorrow. Now this will all be one solid video, but uh, I'm gonna let you guys decide, do we do the 16 tooth or the 17 tooth? So without further ado, let's get the chesty cam on and walk you guys through how to remove the old chain and sprocket, front sprocket, rear wheel, rear sprocket, and then get everything replaced. And um, let's see how she drives out at Button Willow this next weekend. All right, so like I said, huge shout out to Drive System. So uh, they give you basically, they shrink wrap everything. So this chain is, cut to length so when we put it on here it's gonna get right to the end and marry up link to link you don't have to cut any links that's why i really like ordering everything from drive systems and they make it really easy for uh the replacement of the sprocket now the front sprocket here is a 17 tooth stock sprocket now we've ordered in addition a 16 tooth sprocket just to see possibly do we go with that? So our first order of business is gonna be cutting off the chain. Now, uh, I've got a little uh, grind uh, angle grinder here is what I use to cut off the chains. I usually find a nice spot that's got a clear landing right here. Uh, some people, what they'll do is they'll grind off, they'll try to find the master link. Let's see if we can notice it. And then what they'll do is they'll grind it off and then push the pin out. Honestly, it's a lot more pain in the butt to do that than just to find a spot right here and actually just cut this safely and just cut the whole link off and then the chain will just come off. We're not gonna be reusing the chain. Uh, in fact, we've got a chain wall over here full of chains. So um, let's go ahead and start get our safety glasses on and start cutting this one here and get the sprocket off. Then we're gonna go ahead and remove the rear wheel and the front sprocket cover, swap everything out and uh, we're good to go. All right, I can't urge you guys enough to be super, super careful uh, when cutting. Uh, basically go nice and slow, nice and easy, and just cut right through the middle of both the front and rear link and the chain comes right off. Please be careful, you guys. Don't get this thing to kick up on you. Get a nice firm grip on it and go nice and slow. Don't try to rip through it super fast, okay? So it took all but a minute to do it, but you know, like I said, we, we want to do it nice and slow. So now that we've got the chain removed, we can actually pull the chain just completely out. And uh, our little chainy snake goes up on the wall. All right, now we're gonna move on to the removal of the rear wheel. Now, uh, BMW's axle nut is 34 millimeters, by the way. Um, very hard to find a 34 millimeter in the store. So I've ordered these off Amazon. Uh, so basically we're just gonna uh, get this back axle nut removed. That's all we've gotta remove. So being that we don't have a chain on, you can see that this actually moves fairly easily. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this 34 millimeter completely. All right, with our 34 millimeter nut, washer and spacer all removed, we're gonna head over to the other side. And what we're gonna do is we've got our brake caliper here. So 
it's kind of a finagle hand wise because you've got to hold the wheel you've got to hold the caliper so it doesn't bump into this and slide the axle out so we're going to be sliding the axle out and then as the axle comes out the wheel's obviously going to come off but we need to get this brake caliper up and off of the brake disc so um, i'm going to try to show you guys as much but um hopefully we'll hopefully we'll be able to work it So there we go. Now over here, we're gonna have some wheel spacers. We always wanna keep our wheel spacers on the correct size. So this side doesn't have a wheel spacer per se, um, but the sprocket's gonna come off. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this wheel completely and set this wheel down on the ground. And now we can go ahead and actually pull this sprocket cover, just uh, the sprocket here completely off. So with a little bit of wiggling back and forth, we get our sprocket carriage off, and this is what we're working on. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this over here and um, go ahead and now start removing the front sprocket cover so we can get everything laid out right down here and we know exactly which way we're gonna go and then figure out if we're gonna do the 16 or the 17. All right, now we're ready to move on to the front sprocket. It is right behind this black plastic cover, of course being blocked by the quick shifter. So what we're gonna have to do is remove the lower bolt here off of the quick shifter, which will allow us to pull this up out of the way to access the bolt here to remove the uh, cover for the sprocket. So let's go ahead and get the quick shifter bolt removed completely so we can get this up and out of the way. All right, now that we've removed the quick shifter, now you see we've got access to this bolt up top. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this bolt with I think it's a 25 millimeter uh, T. And uh, by the way, this one is down here is a 27 millimeter. And be careful removing this bolt, it's Loctited in. Uh, take some good leverage to get that thing off. So once we remove that, we can start working this uh, sprocket cover off. All right, so once you've removed this bolt, um, these there's little ball uh, prongs in here. Um, it, it takes a bit of pulling, but you'll see there, they're, they're really seated in there. But now that we've got this removed, now we've got access to the front sprocket. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and try to get this thing back into neutral. All right, so BMW always does these little locking flange nuts. I guess that's what they're called. So if you look here, they're bent over. So what you have to do is you have to get a nice little screwdriver and you have to work it in here and you have to actually pound flat here and the other side in order to access the nut. It's kind of a locking washer to keep this thing from coming loose. So what we'll do is uh, we've got a nice screwdriver and a mallet and we're gonna just be gentle and we're gonna actually work this thing back straight so we can get the nut off. All right, now that we've got these both these spacers pushed back, now we have access to our 34 millimeter, same one as the rear, uh, to get on here. Now, uh, you do not, Please people, do not put this in gear and go against the gearbox to remove this, okay? Keep this in neutral. So we're gonna put this in neutral. So you can see it's free moving. And this is the best time to have an impact gun because it'd be able to pop it right off. The other option is to run the chain back through there, have someone hold the chain as you're breaking that loose. Uh, again, I would highly recommend an impact gun on a low setting just to get that thing loose. So a couple clicks, a couple rotations, you'll notice our bolt comes out. This is our little locking ring. And then our sprocket actually just comes right out. Now make note, the inner goes against the engine. So you see you've got this lip here on the inner. So the new one that we're gonna put in, let's say it's hypothetically the 16. The 16 has the lip, it's gonna go in straight in here and it locks right in. 
All right, well, welcome back to day number two. And the consensus is we are sliding on the 16 tooth uh, one down in the front. Looks like everyone has wanted to see this. So uh, let the wild rides begin. Now I will tell you guys this, the, uh, the sprocket was a little bit tight getting on initially. Once it goes on, it slides on. Um, I kind of thought that the teething was wrong, but it is correct. So once you have it slided, slid on, remember the lip goes on the inside. You're gonna take your locking ring, okay? And you can kind of see how it was bent. We're gonna go ahead and slide this on the teeth and your bolt is going to be lip out. So we're gonna go ahead and start threading the bolt on and we're going to be hand torquing this. Now, what we're going to do is again, we don't wanna go against the gearbox. So we don't wanna put this in gear and torque it. So we're gonna keep this exposed and move to the rear sprocket and get the rear sprocket all mounted, the rear tire all mounted, the chain on it, and we're going to use the rear tire to hold the front sprocket so we can torque this. Then we're gonna get these tabs and bend them over. So uh, we've got our locking. So uh, our rear sprocket hub here is a 17 millimeter. Again, I would highly recommend using an impact wrench. If not, if you guys are this far and you guys aren't following along with me, you can break these loose while they're on the tire. Uh, you can also do that with the front sprocket. So uh, if the chain is still on, you can break this nut loose with the holding of the rear tire. Again, just don't do it against the gearbox. Now, uh, 17 millimeter for the rear, we're gonna remove these uh, five bolts. We've got our little impact guns, so that's nice. So let's go ahead and get these removed. All right, with the five bolts removed, you should be able to just slide the sprocket up and out and on with the new one. But before we go with the 520 sprocket on here, which just slides right on, I'm gonna take a little bit of chain cleaner and I'm gonna go ahead and just chain clean uh, any uh, of this part where uh, old chain lube is on. And then I'm also gonna clean these nuts real quick just to kind of give us a fresh, clean look on here. And then uh, we'll get this on the wheel and get everything mounted back on the wheel. All right, now that we have all that nice and clean, we'll go ahead and slide on the sprocket. Uh, on the new sprocket, you'll see that it says super light here. That's on the outside. So we're gonna go ahead and slide that on. And we're gonna finger tight all five of these bolts. We're not gonna torque them down quite yet. We'll wait until it's on the bike to get that torque down. All right, so we're gonna torque down the rear wheel now. Uh, we've got our little cheat sheet. Our rear wheel chain sprocket to carrier is 70 Newton meters for the rear sprockets. That's those five bolts down there. The front carrier or sprocket nut is 125 Newton meters. And uh, your axle nut back here is going to be uh, 70 Newton meters, I believe. No, excuse me, 90, 100 Newton meters, sorry. 100 Newton meters back here. So we're gonna take our uh, little torque adapter and we're going to go ahead and torque these down to 70 Newton meters in a star pattern. All right, so now we've got the rear carrier hub in here all ready to go. The only thing we're gonna do is on this side, You've got your one washer or your one spacer. Remember your spacer goes in, lip in. And now comes the fun part. Now what we have to do is we have to finagle the wheel on, getting the brake caliper into position. So we wanna get our brake caliper slid in to the adapter here and then the wheel on. So a uh, little bit of finagling, you've gotta get the brake caliper, the brake pads and the disc. You gotta get this, um, let's see. This is fairly well lubricated. You can see the lubrication on it. Um, it's only got 2000 miles on it, so we're not gonna re-lube this. But let's go ahead and uh, just work this thing on and get this thing in. All right, so we have the rear wheel on and I will tell you, I wish all manufacturers was as easy as this bike. The Ducati literally is one bolt, 
five minutes, not even five minutes, two minutes, and the wheel comes off. Uh, 20 minutes of finagling with this, but finally we've got the uh, axle through with the spacer here. Make sure you've got your spacer in correct. And then on here, we're gonna come over here and uh, get our spacer set in here with our washer. And we're just going to just snug up this nut just a little bit because we're going to end up having to adjust everything with the sprocket once it's on. So we'll go ahead and uh, get this on. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get ready to pull the chain out and get the chain run and the chain link, the master link in. Then we can do all of the final torque and all of the uh, final adjustments on the rear wheel. All right, now ready to pull out the chain. Now, this is the very first time I've gone with actually a black chain. I really thought the black would look really good here together. Everything is pretty much all blacked out anyways. So I thought a black chain would be fitting on this one. So we went with the DID black chain instead of the gold. Typically I go with the gold. But again, what's nice about the uh, drive systems is they're all cut to length. So when you get it out, Oh yeah. So first thing we're gonna do, we've got our little master link set up here, is uh, we're gonna grab a towel and probably go in a quarter here and spray a bunch of chain cleaner. We're going to be cleaning all of the excess off of the chain. So we're gonna get a lot of chain cleaner on there and then we're gonna grab one end of this thing and we're just gonna run the chain through the chain cleaner and get some of this excess chain lube off of here because there's quite a bit of lube on there. We don't need quite that much on there. So we're gonna go ahead and just pull this through the cleaner and then get ready to install it. All right, so now we're nice and clean. Now, for you guys who are thinking, why are we cleaning the chain lube off? Trust me, there's plenty of lube inside on the O-rings, which is the important part. Basically, we're just cleaning the outside of it. So I'm not really rubbing much down in, on the front here, I'm rubbing more on the side. So this is nice and clean now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take our chain and start threading it through our rear sprocket. So with it on there, we're gonna be careful not to get our fingers stuck in between the sprockets. And we're gonna start to slowly pull this chain and sprocket through, through the swing arm. So we're just threading it all the way through. All right, so our little snake head rolls around on the front sprocket. So we're gonna keep pulling it through on the front sprocket and then back down. So we're gonna go ahead and now pull it. Now it should be fairly easy. Grab it here and start pulling and get all the way to the end and onto the sprocket. And let's see how close we are. Perfect. You think it's a little too, too, too loose, but we've got one tooth slack. Look at absolutely perfect drive systems. Thank you so much. Now, there's a lot of slack still, but we've got to adjust this chain, but uh, very, very nice. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and start working on the master link. All right, so in our master link baggie, you're gonna have the uh, prawn, the, the male side and the female side, which is there. And then you're gonna have four little O-rings. So what we wanna do is we wanna grab a little bit of the lubricant that they provide, put a little bit on each of the male side, and we're gonna slide on two O-rings on the bottom. So we're gonna go here and here, make sure that they're lubed up. Then we're gonna slide the male master link through the back. This is going to secure everything. So go ahead and slide that through the back. All right, and slide that through. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a little bit more lubrication and we're gonna put it on the front sides. Oop, that one and that one. We'll wipe off the excess here in a minute. Take the other O-rings, put those on there. Go ahead and wipe that side off. And then you're going to take your uh, female adapter 
and just set it on here. And then we're gonna take our chain crimping tool. Uh, if you guys have never done a chain, uh, I would recommend you guys watch a couple of the chain crimping tool videos. Um, I'm efficient at it enough, but I wouldn't say that I'm efficient enough to really teach you guys the right way. I know my way and it works. So we're gonna go ahead and get our, uh, uh, the uh, mating tool together and get this all pushed back through and then we'll get the, uh, the end mushroomed out and uh, we'll be ready for adjustment. All right, so we have the rear chain link nice and mushroomed out. We've got a nice big mushroom head. And again, I will uh, encourage you guys to look up a chain tool kit and the use of this. I'm not as proficient in it, so uh, watch a video prior to this, but uh, you want a nice big mushroom head. Uh, then what we've done is we've gone ahead and adjusted the chain. We want a nice, about just over an inch slack here. There's just about an inch on this one, and uh, they want about inch point four. So we're pretty close on this. And adjusting, again, um, I would highly recommend looking up a BMW S1000 single R chain adjustment uh, because the, uh, the alignment is very important because you wanna make sure that the wheel, let's go back here, is aligned correctly. That's why you're aligning these markings because you wanna make sure that the wheel isn't cockeyed one way or the other, which then cockeyes the chain and everything. So once we've done that, we've gone ahead and uh, tightened up the axle nut to 100 Newton meters. Then we've moved all the way to the front sprocket and we've gone ahead and uh, uh, torqued that down to 125 Newton meters. And then what we've done is you can see, we've gone ahead and crimped this over the easiest way I found, uh, I'm sure that BMW has a tool. I'm sure that some of you are gonna cringe at seeing how I'm doing this, but it works and it actually works quite well. If we just click this right in here, we're able to actually pull that down and crimp that down. We just wanna make sure that basically this is locking the nut from backing out. So once this is done, 125 Newton meters, 100 Newton meters, make sure you did torque these down. Uh, these are 70 Newton meters each which we did earlier and your chain is adjusted now we are ready to button everything back up and take our final look all right well there we have it the super light chain and sprocket kit by drive systems huge shout out to them thank you guys for making it so simple to get this thing put on no uh, additional cutting and stuff like that so super nice uh, i'll link everything down below to this chain and sprocket kit remember uh, I went down one tooth in the front. Now, I will tell you guys, I went down one tooth on the Street Fighter and I regretted it, but it's a much different animal and that was already down one tooth from the Panigale. The gearing on the Street, on the S1000 single R is actually the same gearing as the double R. So going down one more might be good. It might not be good, but we are heading to Button Willow at the end of the week. And I will tell you, Button Willow is not a really fast track. So going down one gear is gonna be really, really good. Now, the following Friday, we are gonna be at Thunder Hill that's where going down one gear is going to maybe cripple this bike because we've got the long straightaway. So thank you guys for sticking around. Stay tuned, do the normal, hit the subscribe button, smash the like button, ring the bell notification. The bell notifications gonna give you guys future notification of future content here on the S1000 single R uh, or the Street Fighter. We've got some stuff, some parts still coming for the single R. We've got some parts coming for the Street Fighter. We've got some stuff coming for the Ducati V2. Uh, Bogna has bought in a new Ovali. Uh, if you guys don't know, that's Leo. Hello, Leo dog. Um, anyways, uh, thank you guys for sticking around and uh, hopefully we'll see you next video. Bye guys.